Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Oh, hello, good afternoon. My name is Peter Pilgrim, and I'm going to be talking about why we peer. The slides are already, are already available following this bit.ly link. I've only got 15 minutes, and this is a tech talk that I gave to a user group and my client company about, about 12, 18 months ago. So I... I'm um, an independent contractor. These are my social um, links. Uh, I have a LinkedIn, I have a Twitter and a blog, and I have an independent uh, company, limited company in the UK, called Pete Pilgrim Engineering Architecture Technology Limited. So I'm a Java champion, a software developer for a long time. I've written a few books. I develop design architects, microservices for banks, retail clients. I'm available for hire. I just finished the contract last week, and that's what I'm looking for. So, peer development. What is peer development? So, uh, some of you may be aware of what peer programming is. Some people may not. But uh, 24 months ago, I didn't have a clue of what peer development was. That's because I, until I got a, a contract with a client that was using peer development more or less for nearly not even 100%, but 95% of the time, then it finally got to me. So peer development is in your mind. And so this was my work desk at a Spanish bank. I won't name them, but you can go on my LinkedIn and have a look. And... Uh, but essentially, it's two people working together at a workstation with enough office space. Now, this little was a high profile project. I forgive the untidy desk. And uh, it was inside of a legacy bank who were doing waterfall and a bit of agile. And they wanted to move and develop code faster. And I joined six months into their project. And so the benefits of peer development very quickly is that one works in a user story, a task. If you do Scrum, Kanban, Lean, you understand Jira tasks or bug trackers or moving stories from left to right. And so peer development is strongly associated with XP, extreme programming and test-driven development, usually. But... I've seen it used in ops, DevOps, when we've got a problem late at night or a, a production issue and we go off to a war room. You're seeing two guys and operations try and solve a problem with message queues with Pivot to Cloud Foundry and debugging, solving and testing. So you don't particularly have to be in a 100% working environment to be a peer developer. So as I repeat, it's usually you have one workstation, mirrored displays like I have here, although you can't see this. I don't have two mice, and, but there are definitely two mice and two keyboards usually. And that was the case for many of the places where I did proper peer programming. Like I said, I was uh, a skeptic, and I said, all right, I've got this contract now. Uh, okay, I'm cool with that. And I did the test-driven development test, and they gave me the gig. So um, what are the supreme benefits in that experience? Well, I found code reviewing. I, I worked in businesses where pull requests and the tech lead had to approve your check-ins. And then I finally got it on day one of working with this bank that it's up front, the, the reviews. It's timely, efficient then. And because you're working as a peer, it's hard then to point a finger at you. You're the one, you're the bad one, because you're working as a peer developer in the peer. So you, there's a lack of uh, blame culture. And yesterday we had the keynote with Andre talking about diversity, being apolitical, having transparency and safeguarding younger or novice developers. As I mentioned, you get the software quality uh, up front 
as soon as, as long as you hire good people in your teams and you encourage them, yeah, you get that benefit of knowledge share uh, and diversity. And I and in and then you, the final clincher is that you get high performance teams out of it. If you work in a really good team with good management, I'll come to that. Then you get civility. The team it, itself is protective, although that can swing the other way, where nepotism in high-wind people who look just the same is protective. You get support then. So if, say, you've got um, a lowy load of stuff coming from Amazon and you need to fit out your kitchen from Ikea, then you get uh, people that actually help. That also helps in non-peering teams, but I found it particular. Uh, of interest and, and enthusiasm and passion in, in uh, peer development teams. So, funnily enough, since we had the keynote yesterday with, with the diversity and ladies, um, the, this bank started or incubated their secret, it's not so secret project, in Pivotal, in their offices in London. And Pivotal are like these Fort Works and, or Accenture, or these companies like XSD or XSD that I spoke to just now in the basement. And basically, they found peer programming exceptional as it's, uh, it's the center of everything they do in, res in research and development, and including Spring and Cloud Foundry. And so the benefits are definitely undeniable. Now, Pivotal have their office in, uh, in the where was it, Old Street in the Silicon Roundabout. And it's really good because you get served breakfast early in the morning there. You can pick your own breakfast, kind of like the Google offices, and people can go in and they're then encouraged to work only five hours, but they prepare in 100%. And then at the end of the company's incubation period, then uh, you take those processes says, and move them into your own corporation. And this is interesting, Maya Rose Crane and Sarah Connor, who two ladies are uh, working at Pivotal London. And I just took that quote from their side. As I said, you need management from the buy-in. <laughs> it's not like Groovy and Grails year, years ago where you can start coding Groovy on the secret because the management and the project management office and also the stakeholder need that buy-in, and you need the authority. And there's a good reason for that. It's because there are challenges to peer development. Yeah, peer programming requires vulnerability. You are vulnerable, you have to communicate. Uh, it can be exhausting, so because you're working with your partner, you're jibber and jabber, you're speaking, you're looking at your partner, Jane or John, so you need to communicate, and it can also lead to be, it will reveal and expose personality clashes. So, so everybody's worked in the software companies, yeah? You've worked in software companies. There's one guy or girl, usually a guy, who is off in a corner and wants to keep things done his way. And if you've read a book by Lisa Crispin called Fearless Change, you'll understand, uh, yeah, personalities are very important in software development. Uh, so the ch I categorize the, these challenges as skill set differences. So I'm a tech lead, senior developer, and the person that I might be pairing with has only got one year of Java, a novice, junior person. But I had that the other way. I recently finished a contract where I was learning Golang. I spent 20 weeks with uh, Go developers who were superior to me. And I did that sort of part rise peer program and that's how I learn that's how I choose to learn I'm older than most of you guys now and girls so and of course I've talked about the toxic personalities it can be exhausting and so with peer development one must be careful to respect your peer you need to give them uh, privacy so obviously have a break 
and talk and go and let them do your things like banking or whatever, talking with the family or even checking how the dogs and the cats are doing at home. As um, and management can also be a challenge if they're not brought into it and if they don't come from the pivotal school or the Fort Worth school, uh, then, yeah, if, people, if management don't understand peer development, it's kind of shot, in my opinion, because you have then the, t the typical things of bad agility and, and bad planning and bad project management. Okay, so some hints and tips I, and some fixes here. So the general approach is that I recommend uh, is to have an induction for peer development. Say you are going to go with 50% or before you go to 100% peer programming, then you need to start with an agreed task and then decide how, which of you are going to be the driver typing at the keyboard and who's going to be the observer reviewing the code. And the benefit is that you of that is that you get the code reviews up front and then regularly swap the roles during the day. As I said, peer development consumes your brain because you're talking all the time, you're always on. And so you, generally goofing around isn't fun. So you must respect your peer. If I see, if I'm peering with John, who's if he's always looking at his iPhone and, and not paying attention to the code, then it's not helping the software quality. And to reduce exhaustion and fatigue, it's important that you swap the peers, generally every two to three days. Some people want to do this like half a day. I Personally, don't agree with that because the way we do j develop Java software here, it normally takes a store. We I don't know about you. Even if you are continuously deploying to the cloud, you, it generally takes a couple of days to implement a story or to finish a, um, a Jira task. And it's um, of course you want to be egoless in your de uh, development as much as possible. So. Gentle language, so I, you need to also talk to your partner with a lot of respect. So, as I said, don't interrupt, don't disregard, don't distract. Uh, make the space for people to make mistakes. So if you're a lead, it's very important uh, with novices, they're going to make mistakes, they're going to fail. So get into your agile process of giving regular feedback and share the experiences. Make sure that you write, a, stick a post-it note on those retrospectives that you are having every week or every two weeks. So for strong pairing coaching and new joiners, this is a, for tech leaders and um, anchors. Take, as I said, takes extra special care with new starters give them time, guide the novices by observing, but also drive. Don't let the novice just drive on their own. <laughs> Show them the ping pong technique. So go and look online what the ping pong technique is, for, especially for test-driven development. You don't, with peer development, you don't have to follow test-driven development because there are other cases of exploration and de de debugging and research. Yeah, and for tech leads, provide a one-to-one -one with your new starters. So for, for peering, suppose I have a team of eight, Peter, John, Alex, Maria, Heather, Karim, Edward and Craig. This is my agile team and I'm peering with John on Monday and Tuesday. This is Scrum Week version one. On Monday and Tuesday, we work on those, on those tasks. And then we swap peers on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And so if I go back, you can clearly see people have moved around. So Alex has got John, and I'm with Maria. And so this is a, and using post it notes is the fastest uh, way uh, possible. If you want to capture a record of this, I strongly recommend that you have 
a pairing matrix, which is advanced, after you get comfortable, and then track. I don't know if you can see, it's blue is actually where we are. So, so we're in week two of our sprint. And so maybe that should be in, in green, because black and blue are hard to see sometimes. So anyway, what you want to do is populate that and capture just with, I've put it with just numbers. I've, I've put the S as to represent sprint as a prefix, but you could put in numbers to represent the sprints. And at the end of that, you've got a, you know that Maria has paired with all of the team. So that's an advanced tip. Okay, so I've come to the end, <laughs> kind of. So why do we pair? Well, Pairing helps us catch the bugs early. Like if you have a, te a toxic technical lead or an architect that's always blocking you from committing, no matter how you do it, then it's just stupid. Pairing is like getting the review right there. So you don't have to have a pairing pull requests. It's, it's slightly different. Talk to me afterwards about remote pairing. Yeah, you get to share the knowledge and diversity. And I said, you get the benefits of high performance teams where they actually care for each other. They feel secure and work is like a second home. You could leave your office in a mess of, of all the Spanish bank eventually had to put their foot down and have a clean desk policy. <laughs> so, um, but for the management, this is the thing why uh, people invest in Pivotal. You go to a management uh, stakeholder and say, I will get my return on investment earlier with peer development rather than a single development teams. That is the key thing here. That is the game changer here. And there's, has anyone here read the Phoenix book? The DevOps book? Yeah, okay, then you'll know about waiting times. So, you can tell me now, does peer development actually work? Of course it works. It may not be the way we know it now, but this, these two are the earliest peers, <laughs> and they were mega successful, uh, the two Steves, uh, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. So yeah, peer development can be hard. It takes discipline, trust, you need to accept your vulnerabilities. It's interesting that Bill is quite younger than Paul, to give you a clue. You need collaboration, and you've got to not have the ego. The ego came much later, if <laughs> and I guess it is worth it. The Microsoft being the Megabox company. Anyway, thank you, and that's my talk. Thank <laughs> you.